My father, Roddy Edmonds, through an incredible act of bravery in World War II, saved nearly 1,300 soldiers by defying the Nazis and telling them no. And because of that, there's probably 13,000 or more people alive and well today because of his choices. My name is Chris Edmonds. I'm the author of No Surrender, and it's a book about my journey to discover my father's experience in World War II and the fact that he saved thousands of men in a Nazi POW camp. My father served in World War II as a Master Sergeant in the 106th Infantry and fought in the Battle of the Bulge, which was the largest and bloodiest battle of World War II. They were ultimately captured and spent a hundred harsh days in two German prison of war camps. And December 19th of 44 is when he was captured along with thousands of other men. From there they were sent on a death march, basically a march to uh, trains deeper into Germany. No food, no water. If you didn't march, you didn't last. Shots would ring out in the back as the Germans would shoot soldiers. And then they would take them and put them on trains. They put them on trains in Germany and took them deeper into the heart of Germany. The POW camps for the Nazis, they were broken down between privates, non-commissioned officers, and officers. They were not good places to be. The main thing that the men had to deal with, besides the German soldiers just deciding they wanted to kill one of them, was extreme starvation. The Germans did not feed them hardly any food at all. They, they subsisted on a watery soup, and then bread that was mostly made up of sawdust. It was less than 500 calories a day that they were surviving on. Most of the men lost 80 to 100 pounds during their time that they were captured. The first day they were marched into the camp, they stood out in the snow and were intimidated by the German officers and the German guard dogs all day long. At the end of that day, they marched a young Russian soldier in front of the Americans. They were forced to watch this young Russian soldier be brutally murdered. The German commandant came to my father and said, this will happen to you or any of your men if you disobey our orders. And so they were humiliated, but also they were intimidated. If any one of them had turned away from watching that horrible incident, the guards would butt them with the rifles and threaten to shoot them as well. That next night, my father received orders from the Germans that the following morning when they would take roll call, they just wanted the Jewish men to fall out. So they were segregating the Jewish American soldiers from the non-Jews. And the orders were very explicit, very clear. Just the Jewish men, if anyone disobeys those orders, they will be shot. And so dad turned to his men immediately. He said, we're not doing that. He said, tomorrow morning, we're all falling out, just like always. And so that's what they did. They fell out the next morning to defy the Nazis, but also to defend their own American soldiers. Their very lives were at stake. It wasn't just dad disobeying the order, all the men were disobeying the German orders. And so all of them were subject to be shot. They all assembled in the yard where they were counted. And the German major came out of his quarters and he looked immediately, he knew that something was wrong. He was expecting maybe a couple of hundred soldiers out there and there were nearly 1,300 American GIs standing there in sharp formation. And so he stormed over to my father and he got up in his face and he said, they can't all be Jews. And my father said, we're all Jews here. And so that was my father's decision to, to say that. I have no idea how he came up with that verbiage, but he was re refusing to give the Jewish men over at that moment. And the major turned red faced, he pulled his gun on my father and put it in his forehead. And he screamed at my father, he said, Sergeant, one last chance. You will order the Jews to step forward or I will shoot you right now. Lester Tanner is a POW who was in the camp with Dad. He said, I'm standing on your father's right. And he said, I'm amazed at your father's bravery. He said, his courage made us brave. It spread throughout all of us. And his courage was our courage. And he said, your father never wavered. He just stood completely firm and he said, Major, all you will get is name, rank, and serial number. That's all. Well, the Major said, I want the Jews. Lester said, I didn't know what was going to happen. He said, I figured that he was going to shoot your father. But the Major turned white and his arm began to shake. My dad spoke to him and he said, now listen, Major, he said, you can shoot me, but you'll have to kill all of us because we know who you are and you'll stand for war crimes when we win this war and you will pay. Lester said, I couldn't believe it. Your father was so strong, so resolute. 
Later, Lester would tell me, he says, your, your father could no more have given over any of his men than he could stop breathing. He just couldn't do it. And the major backed down and he took the gun down from my dad's head and he marched away. And he never came back asking for the Jews again. The Germans were taking the Jewish soldiers out of the camps and sending them to harsh concentration camps, labor camps, where they would work them to death. By the Germans, they were not considered real human beings. They were just pieces of equipment they could use. Dad had some sense of that. He must have had some sense of that, that if these men left that camp, they might not survive. And he wasn't going to let that happen. My father, because of his actions, was awarded one of the highest honors from the nation of Israel. It's the Righteous Among the Nations. He's the only U.S. soldier to receive Righteous Among the Nations. It is my journey to pursue a Medal of Honor for Dad. Dad hasn't received the medal yet. We hope he will in the future. The moral of my father's story is that you and I, as ordinary people, can make a difference. An ordinary life lived well is extraordinary, even heroic. Hatred and anti-Semitism and racial division is a huge problem for all of us. And it's brutal, it's ugly, and it can happen in the hallways of schools where it's just being a bully to somebody, or it can happen with someone doing something violent. But the solution is found in the hearts of each and every one of us. When we extend ourselves beyond ourselves to love others, you see, I think it was Martin Luther King who said that unconditional love and unvarnished truth will win the day.